Hey, Marco, thanks for joining us. Um, first of all, can you give me a brief introduction to you and your history with Turbo? Yeah. We've met before and I know you're, you're quite involved with the project, so maybe a brief intro. So yeah, my name is Marco Sonnereger. I've been with uh, the brand Specialized for a bit more than 17 years and summer it's gonna be 18 years uh, total. I've been uh, involved in Turbo since day one, so since 2009 when we started the idea about Turbo It's Only Faster as, a, as an amplified bike for Specialized. So at the very, very beginning, started it all with uh, Turbo S and then later we, we did the Turbo Levo, launched in 2015 and then soon later we did the first generation SLs and launched them like 2019. And now here, here we are with, uh, with a brand new SL. Sweet, thank you. So 2019, a few years ago, so much has changed. I think you, be fair to say, really were the catalyst to a lot of lightweight e-bikes that have come out since then. And you've obviously gotten some feedback over the years. And I remember speaking to you at the launch yeah. of the original and you said, actually there's some things that you'd noticed in the design stage that you thought if you did a future one, you might consider. So what are the key kind of things for this bike that you've, you've worked on that make it different from the last one? Oh, there's actually, <laughs> there's a lot of things. This bike compared to the first generation is obviously an entirely different kind of bike. It's uh, from the chassis to the engine to uh, the noise of the engine. It's entirely new from scratch uh, designed. When you develop a bike, it takes us typically three years. And of course, in the three years of that period, you always have these thoughts in your brain. It's like, okay, that would be cool too. That would be great too. But at one point you have to get into production. You know, at one point it's just over and you have to stop playing and start like being serious and go like, okay, we roll it. We're good. We go to production. So during the first generation development, we had some, some thoughts and ideas of how we can increase power and torque on the engine without increasing the actual weight, which is a very difficult thing because at the end, these engines need to last. The quality needs to be right. They need to be uh, able to sustain mountain bike riding for a long period of time. So just increasing power was a, like a, a big dream without increasing weight again, right? You can always increase power and then make everything heavier, but the goal was not to increase weight. That made it quite challenging. The other goal we had at the beginning when we launched the first gen SL, uh, the engine was really nice. It was 1.9 kilos, 35 Newton meters, and uh, had a certain sound, right? It had a certain sound, which I found like, all right, to launch with, right? So we sold a lot of them and we have a lot of happy Kinevo SL riders out there, a lot of happy people. But of course for us, we're always chasing more. So what we wanted to chase with this engine is like a noise level which gets forgotten on the trail. Like, like something when you don't wanna hear it, it's not there, but if you wanna hear it, you can hear it, right? It's like, it's, it's not always in your brain. And I think we actually accomplished that, or at least that's what some of you guys told me the last few days is like, Marco, you're right. It's like, it's not there if you don't want it to be there. And that was a big goal to achieve. And it actually took us, uh, yeah, <laughs> quite a few approaches to get there, and quite some simulation. I, I totally agree. I think when you're riding it, if you want to think about noise and listen, you can hear it, but yeah. it's not any more a factor in riding this bike. You don't think, oh, it's noisy. You no. ride it and it's an e-bike and it's, it's much quieter than yeah, the previous yeah. I, I, I would say so too. Much quieter, more power. We, we uh, went from 35 to 50 Newton meters, which is quite a bit. It's like a 44% increase in effect. And we went from uh, 240 watts peak torque to uh, 320 which is another like 33% increase of, uh, of power. Uh, do people need that power? I guess will be in your next question. Uh, our data says no, right? The data, how people ride these bikes, no, they ride them in eco and trail mode. So nobody was really like screaming loud and for more power. And mission control. You can, you can see yeah. what people are riding yeah, their when, modes in the, exactly. their bike. People who are our riders who ride with our mission control app, uh, there's quite a few of them we see what, what, how they ride the product, how they, uh, what modes they ride in, how long they ride, how much battery they consume, et cetera. So looking at that data, it, it means like, yeah, probably we don't need more power, but here's the but. There's always that kind of moment on a trail where you go like, ah, right now we need a bit more because it gets deeper, you know, those deep little chunky climbs where you actually have to get over it. So it's nice to have that 50 Newton meter torque on board. Uh, if you don't need it, you don't have to use it, right? We, we invented this thing like micro mode a long time ago where you can settle in your modes the way you like it. So the power is there. Do people use it? Yes, they will, but not all the time. But we're still a big goal. I mean, for having two things quieter and more power, that seems like 
quite a tough thing to achieve. So how, how have you made it quieter first? Oh, what the, have you done? I, I, it will take me 10 minutes or more to give you the full full approach. There's a couple of things we've done to the engine. It's a, it's a brand new engine from scratch, right? This so thing everything is, is new. Everything. Okay. There's nothing. Nothing in here is from the first generation. Literally nothing. Has to be like that because we had to increase the stiffness of the gears or the strength of the gears so they can actually um, last with the endurance we put on there. To achieve the noise was the question. So. We went from a three-piece housing design, so on the original engine it was a side wall, a middle, middle center wall, and a side piece, so a three-piece design to a two-piece design. So we have two, two main shelves, like the big one, we can machine from one side, and the side, side shell, so it's more precise machining, we can keep everything a bit more in line and precise, uh, precisely done, so you have a, a, a better noise behavior there. When you look at it, you see all the honeycomb structure. So that's not just fashion, and actually on this engine you don't see it, but it's nice to see here behind this beautiful flush polished surface on the outside, on the inside it's actually honeycomb structure. Mm -hmm. That stiffens up the whole housing. And it takes away the drum feel, you know, like a drum is a flat surface. If you don't have flat surface, you don't have noise. So we did a honeycomb structure across the entire, entire housing, specifically done on the inside because we're keen on having beautiful looking engines to the outside, like different to, I guess, most other guys, design engines, we make ours just nicely go well with the bike, I would say. Like it or not, but we like it. And stiffen it up like crazy. That really helped improve the noise. But to, the main key driver was the gears. How do you design the gears? What gear mashing do they have? What gear tooth count? Like what's the first stage, second stage? What's the planetary gear set look like? So we sampled about five different engines with in the sample phase or in the, in the concept phase. Of, of your own motors? Of your own your motors. Own, yeah. We made, we A, first we, we basically simulated noises, right? You can simulate noise. And then we had like, okay, these five combinations, they should make a good combo. So we made those out of prototypes. We built those prototypes, put them in the frame, because at the end it's always frame plus engine. That's what makes Turbo special too. We do both together. So we can match the structure born noise of this housing with a frame, so you have less overall noise. So we made these five prototypes and Everybody went out on rides, we did group rides, we had all these crazy uh, theories of like placing a water bottle on a trail and the rider comes out, we all close our eyes and then we have to say when we hear the rider coming and then the, you, you drop the bottle, so it's all like these, these uh, interesting ways of measuring noise. It, it sounds like now all like hobby, but at the, at the end it's like listening, right? Like we close your eyes, listen to something, when do you hear it, how do you hear it? And we choose the one from out of those five, we said like, that's the one we all agreed. Like, okay, we believe that one is the most harmonic noise. And that's the one we went with. And that's the one we uh, then validated and put in production. Neat. And power. So what have you done to, to get from 35 Newton meters to 50? 50. 50. And uh, um, how, how it's really difficult as a consumer, as a rider yeah. of bikes to understand power levels because there's so many numbers. So can you talk to that a little bit? Well, yeah, there's, I would say, too many numbers and some, I would say, some people are not using the correct numbers because there's either the power in the front or the power on the wheel. Uh, some values you guys or you people might, might see in the internet are actually not the values measured on the tire, but the values. So we're talking electrical power yeah, electrical and mechanical power. power versus power. mechanical power. Even mechanical power, there's two, right? There's one on the spider, there's one on the wheel because you have some losses between. So anyway, bottom line is, we, talking those numbers, we, our numbers are true, our numbers are real, you feel the difference, uh, you, you definitely do. How to do that? It's a new e-machine, it's a new gear set, and, and it's, an, it's a higher current, so it's, it's all of it, right? At the end of the day, it comes down to making these things in a way that they, they last. That the quality is right, that you don't have massive uh, major failures, and uh, so it's, it's a magical thing to simulate it, calculate it, and, and get it done right. Okay, so the battery is is the same in terms Batteries of the, the same, capacity. Yes. So I'm assuming that there'll be less range. There, there will be if you ride turbo turbo, right, okay. uh, on this new bike compared to the old turbo turbo. So if you if you rode it in the maximum amount of power, maximum, maximum, yeah, both bikes maximum amount of power, you will go faster with one bike because you actually have higher speed due to more power. So that brings you further in the same time. So there's number one factor which actually will help you that you don't have a full, full loss in, in range. The other one, this, this engine was designed at higher efficiency still than the old engine, anywhere between five, even up to 10%, depending on your rider cadence. So we, we do have, in theory, if you ride full 
powerful turbo, a bit less range than the previous version, but we're going faster, we're having a higher efficiency. So as a comparison, if you write first generation and second generation and, and you set the value of the assistance to 200 watts motor power, then you will get further with the new version. Why? Because it has a higher efficiency. So year over year, you actually have, technically speaking, more range, but also more power with more power than a bit less range. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. So in essence, it's, it's more efficient so you can get better range unless you use the full power mode, then obviously you're using 50 yeah. Newton meters and more watts. Okay, that's really neat. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so there's some significant changes on the, on the electrical side. I think a lot of people are gonna be really happy yeah. because people have wanted even just a quieter, if, if you'd have just achieved that, I think that would have satisfied a lot of people. Yeah. But because it's quieter and more power, and yeah. not a small amount, you said 44%. So 44% per, torque, yeah, 33% uh, mechanical power. Yeah, yeah it's a lot, it's that's, a lot, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Um, and it's not just that though, the whole bike is new. So, yeah. so let's talk about the bike and the frame and what, what, what have you done to change? The goal for this bike was the ultimate trail bike. We always said we want to build the one, you know, the ultimate trail bike. The That's bike. A pretty bold statement. It's a bold that, statement. Are we talking like any bike as well? Just oh yeah, it's not just, just within specialized. It's, it's global speaking. The ultimate trail bike. The bike you go out and you have like no doubt, no compromise. That's the ultimate trail bike, right? It's the it's the one, and that was the goal. And and we we wanted to achieve this with like yeah, all the great amplification within the engine. But at the end, everything changed on the frame too. Like we made them top modern uh, sizings and geometries. We have S sizing, so you can choose as a rider you reach, the way you want the bike to handle. Uh, you choose by length of the front center. On top of that, we made a mullet out of it, but you can ride 29, so that makes it ultimate too. You don't need to, de you, we decided for you that mullet, we believe is the ultimate bike. If you believe 29 is the ultimate bike, that's fine. You can go 29. You flip this flip chip back there, 29er wheel has space. You don't change geometries. So that's, that's one of the things we did. Then the headset adjust, we allow you to have three different settings. You can ride either nominal, that's how we ship the bike out of the box. Then we give you a space where you can flip either steep or slack. So we have three settings for you to choose from to make it again for you the ultimate trail bike. So it's a very personalized experience, I would say. You can personalize the whole system and our infrastructure on the amplification and the, the, the mastermind display, but you can also change settings on the bike as in in the chainstay length for 29 or 650, in the flip chip on the shock for BB height, and on the headset for three settings. I'm curious as to the reasoning behind mullet out of the box, because Specialized has traditionally been a 29, 29 We were, yeah, we, we were a traditional 29, 29 company, and uh, we started riding, uh, Let's, let's go there. We started riding 29, 650 wheels and we started liking them, especially on electric bikes where chainstays tend to be a little bit longer because you have an e-machine in the front, right? They're never as short as on an analog bike, but we wanted to achieve analog chainstay length. To achieve analog chainstay length, a small wheel helps. A small wheel, a smaller wheel, the 650B wheel. The 650B wheel helps also for what I call ass bus. So hitting a drop, hitting a high speed section, going straight through it, you will never have this wheel buzzing your ass, never, period. So that helps a lot. And it really makes it playful. You probably have felt it. Like you go through turns and through tight sections and you just whoop, whoop. And that's the, that's the big difference. Yeah. But of course, some people who may prefer 29ers in the back, taller people, maybe like you, and you like a bigger wheel, a longer, longer rear, and you can go for it. It's an, it's an easy change. Okay, and are you finding many people, because obviously the Gen 3 Levo has these, not the rear wheel, but some of the customizations, do a lot of, a lot of riders change? Are they playing around the, with settings? I would say, well, maybe it's a good question. The guys I see on the trail, I always talk to proactively to understand what are what are they doing. Uh, most people have maybe not been correctly informed about all these personalization options. So it's on, on you and me to tell the world that these bikes can be totally customized to your likings. And the end goal is that we design here something that, that every rider can can design the bike, that it's his ult, ult, his or her ultimate trail bike. Yeah. So so what's how do you run yours then? I guess. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, mullet, yeah. number one. I do ride hillbilly in the front and I ride a butcher in the back, so even more aggressive tire set. And I ride slack in the front 
and be below. Got it. So, so, so that's like a 63 and a half yeah, degree head angle with mullet and 160 fork it's gone up to yeah, now. Yeah, 160, 150. You can hit anything with it. And it's yeah. still really playful. That's the beauty about it. It still climbs great. It's still light. Uh, it, it, yeah, and you, you can really go through some rough stuff. Okay, cool. So a lot of people are going to be um, interested in how this system might move over to other bikes. You've got the Kinevo, you mentioned the Kinevo. Yeah, yeah. SL Kinevo. Um, currently you're launching this. Can you talk to any future stuff? Well, you know, like it's kind of predictable, right? What may happen next. I think that's all I can say. Got it. Okay, cool. Well, look, thanks for the chat. And yeah, yeah I mean, you guys have done a great job, a really great job. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be really really impressed um with what you've done specifically around the electronics as well and creating a bike that has loads of adjustability and can really rip and ride in this for the last couple of days it's it's a seriously capable lightweight and it's still um, like we haven't really touched on the weight yeah. but it's still the same weight as the previous gen. well year, year over year the weight if anything increased by the more capable components right, such as the, the, the 38 fork, such as the reservoir shocks. These are heavier than the old classic inlines we had. The new, uh, the new amazing tram shifting is a little bit heavier, but not a whole lot. So at the end, if we're talking not even 200 grams. So we're out of the box with tubes, 17.6 kilos, which is an amazing weight when you consider the trail capability of the bike. So it's real tires, it's real wheels, it's every, everything on this bike is, is made, to, made to tread, right? It's not some fake 180 or 160 rotors and some 800 gram cross country tires. It's, it's legit. It's legit components which don't let you down on the trail. Nice. Well, look, thanks for your time. Thanks yeah. for going through the details. And yeah, um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get to see this in different platforms over the years. And you guys are always cooking up new stuff. So yeah, of can't course. Wait to see what you guys are working on. And yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on the launch of this bike. So. Thank you. Thanks well for done. coming out.